Oh, I think they're doing a great job. A lot of them are. Good afternoon, Dan. How are you? Not too bad, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Radio K Man's Talk Today with Sterling Dwayne Evax. But I do have some questions. There are more questions than Radio K Man's Talk Today. If you're ready to talk, we're willing to listen. Well, I really enjoy this uh, program today. Cayman Islands, foremost listeners' participation program. May God bless every person. Hey, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. And we want to continue to focus on education. And our good friends at CUC will tell you about something that they have on their offer. You want to know more? Well, stay tuned for Talk Today. Talk Today is brought to you by Subway. Open 24 hours in Countryside, Anderson Square in Georgetown, and Centennial Towers in West Bay. And by the Ministry of District Administration, Tourism, and Transport. Explore your history. Explore your land. Explore your sister islands. MedLab in Smith Road Plaza, your complete medical laboratory solution. Call 949-7331. And Savannah Pharmacy in Countryside Shopping Village. Convenient opening hours, including Sundays and holidays. Radio Cayman's Talk Today, the Cayman Islands' foremost listeners' participation program. We ask our listeners to avoid statements or comments which are abusive, derogatory, malicious, or defamatory. Do not use any indecent language or make any statement which is false or misleading. Email talk today at candw.ky or call 1 800 534 8255. Emergency of flow. K Man's number one network that connects you to your world like never before. Let your voice be heard. Once again, here's your host, Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. And in the studios, we talk about the you know, CUC's scholarship program, the HR manager and employee development, Ms. Choi Oriol. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dwayne. How are you? Oh, man. I am great. <laughs> I had an excellent company earlier of you know, someone who reminded me of good things. I have a, a fantastic job with wonderful colleagues. I live in probably one of the best places in the world. I'm healthy. I got good friends. Yes. And I'm handsome. I mean, jeez. <laughs> that too? What? <laughs> Uh, and a better I'll be on the back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's good, it's good. And, and I'm energized and enthusiastic because having the opportunity to share through you what our scholars can, you know, sort of avail themselves to assist with their continued education is important, and uh, especially in a time like this. So thanks for taking time out and share with us. And as we you know, speak to two of your team members, it's yes. going to be awesome. But I'll get to them in a second. Yes. So Ms. Joy, through you, we'll invite them. We'll talk about the program. Okay, great. Thank you very much again, Dwayne, for in for allowing us to be here today. It's great to be here and to share with the community what CUC's been doing for several years. Um, and that is, you know, just the realization that we have that we need to um, um, continually um, increase our human resources and, and ensure that our Caymanians are ready and for work, for the world of work, and you know, for the continued growth and success of both CUC and the Cayman Islands. Um, so yes, yeah, so CUC scholarships have been around for since the inception of 1989. We started giving scholarships to students. Um, we've had over since then over 55 persons who've been recipients of wow. our scholarships. Cool. And and these the scholarships we're talking about. Um, are they available for everything, anything? Is it just high school, university? Um, mm. What are they available? Okay, so you see scholarships are um, available for any subject, any career. Um, I think the conception or uh, the perception rather mm. in the community is mostly around engineering and we don't need engineers. Mm. But CUC is a business that has a, a wide range of um, opportunities from accounting, finance, HR, fleet and services, security, um, engineering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have our data protection area as well. So there's a wide range of opportunities with CUC. So we have, you know, there's two main CUC scholarships. We have um, a scholarship that offers a uh, person's opportunity for uh, to obtain the associates or their bachelors. We also um, recently, in the 2019, I think we started our A-level -le scholarships mm -hmm. as well. 
Yeah. So we do do that. That that was an interesting discussion. I think more and more we're starting to appreciate that, you know, as we finish sort of the, that formative years of high school, what next and mm -hmm. uh, before we enter university. So this is uh, the scholarship is for matriculation this school year uh, for yes. those who want to apply. Yes, All it right. is for this and school year. We'll talk about eligibility, but you have two of your, your team members. Mm -hmm. uh, through you, you want to introduce them or shall we sure. say, yeah, you go right ahead. Let's start with Ms. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the mic over and have them introduce themselves. <laughs> they're they're quite capable of doing so, uh, but we are very proud to have them here with us today. Um, I think I will start to my left. Yeah, all right, Ms. Barber, <laughs> please. All right. Good afternoon. Thank you for having us here. Uh, my name is Victoria Powery. I am the administrative assistant in the Environment, Health, and Safety Department. And this is at CUC, all right? Yes. Environmental Health. And, and safety. safety. I make my time in a second because it's like Joy was just sharing for our listeners. We think CUC, we think engineering, we think electricity, generation, mm -hmm. distribution. Yeah, there's probably in a finance section because, you know, we need to get our dividends. Mm -hmm. But there's much more. There is. Ms. Bernie, maybe you can bring that much more in. Good mm -hmm. afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. My name is Bryony Gallegos. I am in the customer service department at CUC. I am a revenue and quality assurance analyst. You know, that analyst part is. <laughs> 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 but I, I'm hoping that as people listen, they can see not only the educational opportunities, but the employment prospects. Um, <coughs> and see, <coughs> forgive me, I've been, no, I think I've been talking that much recently. <laughs> uh, whether it's true car lack or whether it's true other things, CUC has opportunities uh, for its team members uh, to participate with other electricity providers in the region elsewhere. So that skill set can translate. But for the scholarship recipients, what are some of the criteria? The criteria is really to have um, <coughs> your application uh, have been preferably mm -hmm. to have gotten your um, acceptance to your preferred university right. and an accredited university. Um, we also require that you have would have finished your high school, you'd have gotten your O levels or A levels or equivalent to that mm -hmm. level. Um, so pretty much that is it. Uh, the, the application form also asks for other things, um, such as rest. You know, you may have to do a reference mm -hmm. from one of your um, professors. Um, some of the other requirements that you remember, just actually mm -hmm. setting out right. and a criteria of what is is your you're expecting your expenses to be at school, writing a, a, a short, es not really an essay, but a short paragraph or two mm -hmm. about why you are the best person for this scholarship and why you need it. Um, uh, and those are some of the requirements for the... And as we asked, you know, both um, Bernie and, and Victoria to share with us their application, their process, but the deadline is when? Right away, deadline? The deadline we've just extended, and it, the extension deadline is coming up. Yep. The deadline is actually tomorrow, March 15th mm -hmm. at midnight. Yep. And then the scholarship is tenable at almost any university globally, if they want? Globally, locally, mm -hmm. anywhere it is. Um, we mm -hmm. can do online um, institutions yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anywhere right. in the world. And, and this is where I, as you know, I appreciate you guys sharing because increasingly, I think we appreciate more and more uh, how accessible education can be, but how, for us, we put impediments. Miss Victoria, from your perspective, if I might ask, mm -hmm. what led you to want and a brand as well to apply to CSC for the scholarship? Um, what was our process like? And share as much as you want so that that perspective student, as Joy was just sharing, sometimes we are intimidated by the whole thing. What if I'm not accepted. Maybe I, you know, all these reasons and we delayed and then the next thing, you know, we regret it. From you, why why apply to CUC? Well, I applied because I was already working at CUC anyway. <laughs> so I actually wasn't really sure mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. And being introduced to the EHS department and working there for a while, I figured out oh, safety is what I'm really interested in. So I asked if that was something I could pursue and if they could provide a scholarship for it. And they were very open and yeah, mm -hmm. I got it. And the application process was fairly easy. Uh, the interview, that's the part where I find 
yeah. intimidating because the application is just yep getting paper all together <laughs> but it's the interview now that face-to-face -face where got me <laughs> a little bit but they the vps and the ceo they were who interviewed me and they were very welcoming down mm -hmm. to earth easy going and the conversation kept flowing and yeah. Well, thankful they're competent people and they can see in your natural shyness that there is an amazing gem and intellect. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Glad that we, we can say it's UCS. We're very smart people. Every day we see the lines, <laughs> now we see the management. Picking you guys. Uh, <laughs> they're smart. Yes. This guy goes, why, why, is, why does he see the same question as uh, Miss Victoria? Um, <clears throat> sorry. So. I had actually completed my associates and I was looking to further my education. I wasn't sure, like Vicky, I was also working at CUC. I've been there for a few years now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I was looking for a scholarship. I applied to both the government scholarship and the CUC scholarship because I knew I wanted to further my education, but wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do it. And um, the CUC process was easy. And like Vicky said, I was also interviewed by um, the VPs, Miss Joy, were you in my interview? I think so. <laughs> See, so long ago. It, it, it was a while ago. It was 2019. I got my scholarship. Um, and yeah, I was awarded and it was, it, I was so happy. So I went with my CUC scholarship being that mm -hmm. I was already employed by them. They offer so much support, um, by people I had already known mm -hmm. instead of just going through the, go the government scholarship and... Yeah. Well, we'll talk as much as possible because I think sometimes this is where we as parents, or children in school, you know, some of them uh, may be on a break of, of sorts. Uh, so when you come back from our commercial break, what's the other eligibility criteria? Is there an age restriction? Um, how much is the, the scholarship? How long is it? You know, little bits and pieces that parents can then take and have a discussion with their children tonight as we have some um, good chocolate cake and maybe some custard popcorn bread. Sure. All right, when we come back... Another 15 minutes if we can. So lucky. Stay tuned for Talk Today. When you're craving something big, something tasty that gives you that lip-smacking satisfaction, something that hits the spot, there is nothing better than a foot long from Subway. It's pretty tasty. Filling and full of flavor. Try our new sweet onion steak teriyaki with a twist. Or the classic chicken teriyaki. Top it with green pepper, onions, cheese, and that sweet onion teriyaki sauce all piled on on your favorite artisanal bread. Satisfy that craving with a foot long from Subway. Fresh, delicious, tasty, meaty. Let's make it a meal with a drink, chips, and cookies. There is nothing better than a foot long from Subway. For medical lab services in Cayman, go straight to MedLab. For a full range of medical services, pleasant, clean, and comfortable environment, no long lines, and affordable fees, visit MedLab at the Smith Road Plaza. Open Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and half day on Saturdays. Call 949-7331 to make your appointment. For medical lab services in Cayman, MedLab. Did you know that Valumed Pharmacy has a free online prescription service? Managing your health and medical requirements has never been easier with Valumed. Simply visit value-medpharmacy.com. That's V-A-L-U-medpharmacy.com. And click the Refill Prescriptions tab on our website. Fill in the information for new prescriptions or refills and choose your preferred pickup location. Valumed on Walkers Road or Town. Then bring in your original prescription from your doctor when picking up. There's no need to stand in line and wait for your prescription. Save time and pick up prescriptions at your convenience by visiting value-medpharmacy.com. That's value-medpharmacy.com. Are you a Caymanian job seeker searching for employment? All jobs, whether full-time, part-time, temporary, or permanent, will be required to advertise on the Jobs Cayman portal. Visit work.ky, that's W-O-R-C.ky, to start your job search to see all available jobs or to apply. For assistance in registering or to learn more, call toll-free 1-800-534-9672 or customer care at 945-9672. 945-9672 today. Talk today. But I do have some questions. Talk today. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk today. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks.
Hey, good afternoon and welcome back and thanks for joining us. And as we, you know, today some of you looked at the calendar and go, hmm, oh, March the 14th, that's my nephew's birthday, but happy birthday today. But it's also March the 14th, hmm, Pi Day. Yes, I like PIE, but it's also PI. And we'll tell you that discussion at 1.30. So focusing on education, mm -hmm. opportunity for scholarships through CUC, the HR and Employee Development Manager, with Joy Ormuel, together with two of the, uh, their employees and scholarship recipients, with Brianna Gagos and Ms. Victoria Powery. And sit next door is Susan, but don't pay her no mind. <laughs> <laughs> we were asking about the scholarships in the process, and I wanted to know how much. I mean... What was that say in the ladies to do? The, where's the beef? <laughs> show me the money. Was show that me the money. <laughs> okay. So our, our CUC scholarships um, for bachelors currently sit at $40,000 per annum. And that is whether you're local or overseas. It all depends on your need as well. Uh -huh. But $40,000 for our scholarships. CI? CI. Wow. Correct. Um, our our, our A-level scholarships are $12,000 CI. Um, and... Those are the two. Yeah. Do you do bachelors and, and masters as well? Or just bachelors and masters, mm -hmm. yes. We do have two of our recent recipients who just graduated this year um, who are who have been employed with the company as well. They just completed their masters, one in accounting and the other in engineering and computer engineering. Right. And I think, as Ms. Gay was said earlier, the support that you get, I think both her and Victoria, emphasize, you know, you, it's not just the money and, you know, having satisfied the criteria and go to school and get a degree, but you have support. People want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. um, with that then, criteria, again, Caymanian, uh, age? Caymanian, college age, 18. No, mm -hmm. most persons are around mm -hmm. 18 when they go in. Except for the A-levels. Except right? for the A-levels, then mm -hmm. that's different. Right, that's right. a different age group, but all Caymanians. The application process is easy. It is online. If you go to our website, um, to our careers page, um, and then you will see the, the, the scholarship application there. Just follow the link um, and fill out the application as completely as possible, um, adding whatever information you can. And we understand that, you know, for some students at this point, they may not have mm -hmm. the, all of the documentation ready. They may not have had their school acceptances yet, but just put a piece of paper that tells us that you've applied to a school and you're waiting on that response and we will still have the application processed during that time. Would it be that the student has the intent to go off uh, in this school year, whether it's in you know, August, September, October start uh, this year? It is definitely for this year, whether they start in August or September. Um, we aim to have responses to uh, the recipients by May of this year. Mm -hmm. So they should know whether they've gotten a CUC scholarship or not, and they're ready to go off to school, whether it's August or September or October. Right. Perfect. So, Brina, from your perspective, what was that? I mean, you work in there like uh, mm -hmm. Victoria, uh, you studied. Tell us about their, their process. But I think many times, I know, I joke and say, you know, 2020 was a long century. 2020 <laughs> was an even longer century. Mm -hmm. But 2019, conceivably, was a long time ago. But it's a lot shorter than <coughs> when Joy and I went to school. But <laughs> <laughs> so for that young student, mm -hmm. remind them of the process. What was it like? What were you studying? How did it unfold as you went through your journey? So I applied in 2019 for the 2019 scholarship. Um, as Ms. Joy said, I was one of the applicants that I didn't have my acceptance letter yet. I wasn't even really sure what school I was going to go to. Mm -hmm. So with that support, I was back and forth a lot with the committee and trying to um, spoke to my mentor and my manager to try to find out the best path for me. Mm -hmm. And then once I decided on the school, it wasn't until 2020 that I started. And obviously, you know, that was <laughs> COVID. So I actually did my entire yeah. schooling online. It wasn't supposed to be, but that's how it ended up because I started online because of COVID and I just decided to finish online. You know what, sometimes, you know, as disappointed as I may be, not every discipline is a misfortune, so that might have been, you know, just perfect for you. But yes. thankfully, you got through. But it also speaks to the support. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter if you are a veteran doing something. You know, this is you could do it blindfolded, mm -hmm. or whether you're new, having that support. Yeah. What was it like, guys? You continued because many of us don't know what we want. I mean, when I grow up, I'm still thinking about what, what I want to do. But mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So um, CUC actually assigned me a mentor mm -hmm. as well as a um, internal contact. 
So my manager was my contact, Miss Michelle Scott, and my mentor, Miss Pat Vinyl Clark. Mm -hmm. So between the three of us, we just spoke a lot about what my strengths looked like, what my weaknesses were, what my career path looked like to make the best decision. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the entire time that I was in school, if I needed any support, if I had any questions, if I needed someone to look over an assignment, they were there to help me. Um, on top of that, I was also working part-time at CUC because obviously the circumstances were different being mm -hmm. that I was doing school online, but still in the country, not away. Um, mm -hmm. So CUC helped me by you know, restructuring what this, what my scholarship looked, what my scholarship looked like for me based on the circumstances. So it's very accommodating, very supportive, and I think it speaks to what our perception is. You know, despite whatever you may complain, CUC yes. seems to be uh, willing to nurture its employees, yeah, talent development. That's that's amazing. So joy, I mean, people just need to apply. Mm -hmm. We just need people to apply. How many, um, if I may respectfully ask, this time you're looking for? You get 100 applicants, can you take all 100? Is it? We would gladly take all 100. Mm -hmm. I don't know that all 100 would, uh, would make it to the, to the final. Mm -hmm. um, but in the past, we have given up to six scholarships at a time. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the caliber of the students and the, the applications and the needs of the students. So there is no set amount right. for this year at all. So please don't delay. I mean, you have until midnight tomorrow. Midnight tomorrow. All right. Yes. Miss Barry, mm, yeah, your colleague shared her perspective, her process. What was it like for you? Well, I got my scholarship in 2017. So mine was way back. <laughs> <laughs> that was so long ago. Yeah. And mine was for my bachelor's degree for occupational safety and health, mm -hmm. which is not really a typical thing people go for and of course I applied for that being in the health and safety department and working um, full time and doing online was a bit hectic mm -hmm. but I had the support of my manager at the time Joni Kirkono she's now my director <laughs> I have a new manager now but yeah she was very supportive of me if I needed any assistance she was there to help and very accommodating on my time schedule and I had flex time as well and of course COVID too so I got the work from home part <laughs> and doing online studying then too which yeah. well I, I thank you for sharing up and I'm really appreciative that we're able to get out from you because the, the, the modest and humility you exhibit mm -hmm. but I think too many times in our society with great respect we look at our young people and we say you know we don't give them enough credit we don't see the other result you guys are working with a part-time or full you're studying full-time you're going through a process that we all endure and yet you're successful you still have that presence of mind you still have that commitment um, you make a good selection you are with your team mm -hmm. but I think yeah. from what they shared that ongoing support where someone has you it, it, it means the difference between a success and really being successful Correct. Um, I don't know <laughs> it does and it's, it's good when you can have that additional support. And mm. I just wanted to add um, around our scholarships, what, what CUC does offer in mm. our, yes. our scholarship is that at, as a part of the scholarship, we offer you a, a job opportunity when you come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what I don't know. <laughs> um, all of our scholars have come back and been placed within the company. Mm. You know, we, we monitor their progress while they're away and we maintain okay we know we have x amount of students coming back home this year what do we have in place for them where are their where are their pathways for them yeah. and, and so majority all of our scholars have come back and mm -hmm. found employment with the company and i think increasingly we're recognizing how important that is you get the academic support and the you know the financial assistance but you also have uh, a job mm -hmm. practical experience is it though for whatever reason if a student can't or isn't able to, are they required to come back and work for CUC or is it that they have to come back and work in Cayman? Uh, how is that obligation? Well, preferably we would like them to mm -hmm. come to work for CUC. Mm -hmm. However, um, we know that the, what we are investing in 
is um, Cayman as a whole. Uh -huh. So if there is not an availability of a post for us, at, for that individual at CUC, or they found another opportunity, that's also okay, as long as they're coming back to the island mm -hmm. and being productive citizens in the country. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine most of us, we want to return, we have a job, right. we have that opportunity for upward mobility, mm -hmm. good career path. Uh, in this day and age, jobs seem to be few and far between. Mm -hmm. So, good jobs. <laughs> good jobs. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I um, would be accused of saying anything that wouldn't be true but from the customer and the employee satisfaction. CUC seems to be a good company to be working for. So, and people, useful. yeah, you've got your employees who've been there for... Like myself, over yeah. 25 years. Yeah, and still smiling. <laughs> yes. All right, we're going to find a break, and uh, when we come back, is it okay if uh, either of you would want to share more about uh, your work experience there? Um, tell us initial days before scholarship, uh, what it was like, uh, Joy, the other things that you were sharing, yeah. and Ms. Parra, I'm kind of intrigued by the whole idea of the, you know, the safety and the, mm -hmm. the environmental aspect of it and perhaps helping us to allow people to look at a different way. You know, we think CUC, we think engineering, we think all these things, as Joy said, scholarships are available for other areas, not even just the finance. So maybe looking at the environmental aspect. Yep. All right, we're going to pause. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll conclude our discussion. Remember, CUC scholarships are up until midnight tomorrow, yes. 1 p.m. on our uh, Kathleen Ebanks Wilkes, the MP for West Bay Central and the Speaker. I should join us for a half an hour. Now one thirty. Ah, National Pie Day. Well I got a professor and his colleague coming in the studio. We're gonna be talking about it. I had some pie early, but that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. Alright, stay tuned for talk today. For medical lab services in Cayman, go straight to MedLab. For a full range of medical services, pleasant, clean and comfortable environment, no long lines and affordable fees, visit MedLab at the Smith Road Plaza. Open Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and half day on Saturdays. Call 949-731 to make your appointment. For medical lab services in Cayman, MedLab. Busy, busy, busy. Feel like there's not just enough hours in the day. Savina Pharmacy, service to make your life easier. Now you can WhatsApp your prescription order to 929-5045. And pickup is just around the corner with everything your family needs and convenient opening hours including Sundays and holidays. WhatsApp your prescription order to 929-5045. Savina Pharmacy, wholesome values with modern conveniences. Let me tell you something. I've been fishing on the island since I was a boy, and it's getting harder and harder to get a good catch. Maybe it's because there are so many more people in Cayman than ever before. Maybe it's because of how the climate is changing. I don't know about that, but I do know that I want to be able to keep fishing and teach my children to fish one day as well. So it makes sense to me that we have certain areas and certain times of the year to fish for certain things. It feels unfair not to be allowed to fish where my dad had taught me to fish, but I know that being patient now means we can keep fishing for many more generations. We're all in this together, right? For more info, download the Cayman DOE app or visit doe.ky. The Family Resource Center is inviting the public to register for the Color Me Purple 5K, which takes place on Sunday, March 26 at 6.30 a.m. at the Seven Mile Beach. Registration is $30 and includes a t-shirt, registration, and refreshments. There will be great prizes up for grabs, including one of the purplest runner walker. All proceeds from the Color Me Purple 5K will benefit the Family Resource Center's Young Parent Services. The Family Resource Center is celebrating Honoring Women Month throughout March in many other ways and encourages you to follow them on Facebook or Instagram to keep up to date with all their offerings. For further details, please contact the Family Resource Center at 949-0006 or email frc at gov.ky. But I do have some questions. Cayman Island's foremost listeners participation program because... There are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome. And thanks very much. And to our parents, teachers, coaches, and other mentors, here's an opportunity to share uh, with those young ones that are in our charge about another scholarship opportunity. I did the math, and according to the Lebanese dollar right now, where it's like one to a million, I think at 40,000 CI, this equates to plenty of money. <laughs> 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 uh, 
So 40,000 up to 40,000 CA per annum mm -hmm. for a bachelor's um, scholarship. 12,000 if it's a A-level scholarship. Yes. Compliments to CUC. So uh, joy together with your Brianna and uh, Miss Fiona. His daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I should be. Sh uh, no. <laughs> yeah, let me try to do that. No, I, I'm just so, so excited and so grateful that if, if you know, your two young charges, I say, would appreciate. Join our classmates. I would say old classmates no from way. first day of primary school <laughs> all the way through. <laughs> and to be able to sit there in our, our young years and look across two individuals that. We know, we watch you guys grow up, mm -hmm. to see you come into your mm -hmm. own, to see the intellect, but the ambition that you have and the way you poise to be so successful. And the fact that you're young ladies, all compliments to our young men, mm -hmm. but it's so fantastic. So I'm, I'm really beaming. I'm <laughs> it is beaming, uh, and you know, yeah. CUC is looking forward to, yeah. to welcoming more females into our industry. As you know, the, the industry is a male-dominated industry. This is uh, and so it, it's great that we have these two young ladies um, joining the team, and, mm -hmm. and we're looking for more. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I, maybe it's partly because, you know, it's, we're honoring women this month. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm thinking that potentially either you could become the next, you know, was it the CEO that, that yeah. Mr. Hughes' uh, position? Of course. <laughs> I remember Mr. Hughes' position, of course. Right. Ms. Namatha okay. is there. Yes, so you is. got some fantastic ladies, and hopefully the two of you would encourage your other colleagues and those younger. So, Ms. Victoria, with that, what would you say to two things? That young student who's thinking of, I want to study, and as Joy shared, CUC is more considered engineering, mechanical, men you're into the safety and, and the aspect of it, but there's other things. How do you encourage them to consider that? Well, firstly, I would start encouraging them from what are they interested in? Mm -hmm. What do they love to do? So whether it's IT or being out and about in the field or mechanics, as for Briny, Briny started out wanting to be in mechanics, but then she kind of had a little turn. So it's available, anything, yeah. for especially for women, we can do it all. Of course we can do it all. <laughs> if we want to, we also have a, <laughs> a lady um, that works with our diesel engines. So it's open mm -hmm. to any and everyone. We have positions for practically anything you would like to do. Miss mm -hmm. Brenda, if I might ask, mm -hmm. if it's okay, mm -hmm. uh, and I do, I am truly, truly just excited. I, I love when our young people achieve great things when they're poised. I don't need to know them to share and celebrate their success. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Bishop Fagan, yes, they remind us how important that is to do that. But when we know the people, know their parents, know their communities, you can just be so excited. Mm -hmm. Only if you wish and as much as you want, you know. You blame Miss Parry for, you know, putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> we know that you had an interest. You can say why if you wish and to what mm -hmm. extent. And then we know that you have you know, gone into you know, the, the, the financial aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that, that process. Um, maybe what drew you to it? What made you want to con reconsider it? From So I actually started CUC in 2012. Mm -hmm. I was straight out of high school, graduated from John Gray. Um, Okay. My my dad is a mechanic, so when I was with him on summers, Christmas, I was always with him working on cars and stuff. So I just thought maybe I'd try it out. Um, started CUC as a summer student, which I think Miss Joy is gonna touch on, and I started in um, fleet and security, which is basically mechanics and also security. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that for three months, six months, something like that. And then I actually went over to do what Vicky does now. <laughs> so I was the old Vicky then. <laughs> um, and you know, it was more so just me trying to figure out what I liked. I was yeah. 16, 17 at the time. I wasn't sure where my career was gonna go. And CUC gave me the opportunity to kind of try out different departments and see where I fit. Yeah. And um, in 2014, I found myself in customer service and been yeah. there ever since. Well, you have that, that natural disposition, you know, so affable, yeah, just I mean, with the people, <laughs> right? But, and thank you for allowing us to sort of drag that out of you, and I hopefully it wasn't too much of, you know, an imposition. Mm -hmm. But in sharing that, Joy, that's what I wanted to reference. Some organizations, mostly in the finance sector, 
had what we call you know, back in the day a management trainee program. So you came in uh, an accounting degree, some finance degree, and they worked you through you know, the different sector, and then you ended up somewhere to have a basis. But CUC does likewise, as Brendan reflected. You come in as a young student, whether from high school or whether university, and you can find your way, you can navigate, and one day you'll be sitting, who knows, you know, uh, top of the chain. Yeah, mm-hmm. correct. Um, so Brian is correct. She did come in through our, our summer program. So mm-hmm. we do have our summer vocational programs, which offer students the ability to come in during those times. Um, shadow employees get to actually get their hands on and, and work mm-hmm. in the field um, and, and develop from there. We've had students who, are like Brian and others, who never left when they, mm-hmm. when they walked in the door. Um, but our we our summer and vacational students, um, the program, it runs from the 1st of July to the 31st of August this year. Mm-hmm. It, it's around the same time every year. Um, and we've gone through, like, 300 students have gone through that program since we started. Um, so application process for those, of, those summer students who are looking for something to do during the summer, um, um, the program, the application process, opens on the 17th of March through to the 1st of May. So if they're looking for those opportunities, and those are paid opportunities, by the way, um, no, it's a, it's, a, yeah. it's above minimum wage, but it's not that. It, don't come like expecting a lot, but um, yeah. it's definitely above minimum wage. I would wage. joke and say it's like a government employee salary, but <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that. No, but, but it's, there is some little, you know, little money. But, yeah. Yes. Uh, and then um, another scholarship that CUC helps to administer is a Peter and Thompson Family Foundation scholarship. Mm-hmm. Mr. Peter uh, Peter and Thompson, he's a former uh, CUC director, and the family has wanted to give him back to the community. And so they are offering scholarships, and their scholarships are not designed for engineering. It's for anything, mm-hmm. really. So he's have some students who are doing medicine, on, on his scholarships, we have students who are doing creative arts and dance. So it is for fields that are up and coming and, and not possibly, mm. you know, not the normal accountants yeah. and stuff like that. And that scholarship is running at $30,000 per annum as well. Yeah. And, and this is where, as you shared, you know, that investment is in uh, the Cayman Society. Society. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know the more of us that have a level of education and aptitude. Uh, we can hone our skills. We spend some time overseas. Companies uh, appreciate that they for their second their staff. Right. We see the law and accounting firms doing it. They do a two year stint in some other jurisdiction. It's good for that that person. Yep. Very much like what our seafarers experience uh, and work in. Yeah. And CUC does really have that opportunity as well. Mm-hmm. It gives a, all our students, our employees, that opportunity to you know CUC is a big part of a bigger. Um, institution Fortis mm-hmm. and so we have sent um, mm-hmm. employees overseas to mm-hmm. our Fortis sister companies to get the ex- additional experience and skills needed um, you can do cross training within the company yeah. so somebody who probably came back as an engineer with an engineering as an engineer graduate would be, get their time to work throughout the company and work around to, to be able to understand the business and, mm-hmm. and that will help them to grow as well what is it? No, I really appreciate you guys taking time. I hope I made you feel as comfortable and welcome. And uh, through you, uh, celebrate the success and encourage others. As we uh, perhaps close off our discussion, Ms. Power, to you first. Where do you see and what would you like as you continue your career? And in particular, you know, for those parents, because we're the ones that influence our children and we help them to navigate. What would you say to them relative to not just the scholarship, but continued education and career prospects? Well, I'm a parent myself, (laughs) so it's just encouraging your child to Mm. go for whatever they desire, what they would like to do, whether right now it's being an astronaut or Mm -hmm. picking up garbage, because that tends to be for the younger kids. They're like, oh yeah, they see the garbage man. Oh, I want to be like him. But encourage them, Mm -hmm. and especially for the scholarships, like we say, it's... um, till tomorrow mm-hmm. deadline at midnight sit down tonight uh, we have the scholarship is available for a variety of positions or whatever you want to do um, just go through it and be hey is this something do you want to consider do you want to go off to college later off um, later on this year 
and just sit with them and have that discussion and say, yep, we can fill it out together. Mm-hmm. And it's the start the process. Okay. It's the success is there, but it's not just measured in, you know, uh, the way no one's traditionally do. To you, Ms. Kegos, what would you say complementing what Ms. Parvish shared? Um, little Vicky basically <laughs> summed it up, but I think the only thing I would add if you are a young person listening and you don't know where to start, maybe you don't have the home support, you don't you don't have a parent looking over your shoulder trying to help you fill it out. Um give us a call. Give us a call. Yeah. HR is there to help or if you know me personally or Vicky personally, we're on like social media and <laughs> you can reach you out. can reach out, we can help you with it cuz I do know that maybe some students, mm-hmm. some people in that age group, they might not have the support or the help to do that. And just because you don't have that support doesn't mean that you can't apply for a scholarship. Thank you for that, uh, that offer because mm-hmm. um, we know if they did, you, you know, but they wouldn't probably think to. Well, now they have no excuses. Mm-hmm. And if it's just an application, not necessarily that they've been accepted, that's sufficient to get the ball rolling. Yes. All right. Closing thoughts to you, Ms. Joy? Closing thoughts. Um, just to say to all our young people out there to, who are aspiring to further their education, to truly consider CUC as uh, somebody who would give them a scholarship and to apply and apply early, before midnight tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're not, if this year isn't the year for you, but just know it's an annual offer. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, next year may be your year. Um, so please feel free to apply for those positions. We are, CUC is always looking for opportunities to help Caymanians progress. Yeah. Um, you know, education is, is the key. So we are we are in the business of educating all our young people. Um, and we're just so proud of all our scholarship recipients, past and present. Um, we've had many scholarship recipients who've gone on to succeed within the company along with these two um, individuals. We've had Mr. Richard Hugh, our CEO, was mm-hmm. a past scholarship recipient, and he's CEO. And recently we've had uh, Mr. O'Dane Lynch, who was recently promoted to a manager position, and he mm-hmm. was also a scholarship recipient. So there are lots of opportunities, and I just want to say to all the young people, every opportunity that comes up, don't put your eggs in one basket and only apply to the Maple Scholarship or the Government Scholarship. Apply wherever they are. Give don't put your eggs in one basket, but definitely include CUC in one of your baskets. <laughs> well, thank you for making that special appeal. Thank you both, you know, uh, for coming and joining Miss Joy, and wish you, you know, continued success. And thank, thank you. As you inspire, others too would probably be encouraged. So, we'll chat again hopefully very soon. Sure. Bring on any time you wish, Miss Joy. Great. Thank you for mm-hmm. having us. Wonderful. All right. Let's okay. pause and go to the news. And when we come back, please rejoin us. Today's biggest news. Radio Cayman, your voice, your choice. Local, regional, international. This is Headlines from Radio Cayman's newsroom. Today's biggest news. The headline news is brought to you by Health Services Authority. With your latest headlines, I'm Felicia rankin Zollins. The Workforce Opportunities and Residency Cayman office in Cayman Brac will be closed for a two-hour period to allow staff to attend a training workshop. On Friday, March 17th, the office will open at 8.30 a.m., but will close at 10 a.m. The office will then reopen at 12.01 p.m. for the remainder of the day. Normal business hours resume on Monday, March 20th. In international news, the bins are overflowing in large areas of Paris, a week into a strike by waste collectors, with thousands of tons of rubbish sitting abandoned on the streets of the French capital. The workers are striking over the Macron government's proposals to raise the pension age from 62 to 64. Refuse collectors joined the pension strikes a week ago, and the Paris Authority says half of the city's districts, which are covered by council workers, have been hit by the action. Three waste treatment sites have been blockaded and a fourth partially closed. On Monday, the Paris Authority said 5,600 tons of waste had yet to be collected.
Meta, which owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, has announced that it will cut 10,000 jobs. It will be the second series of mass redundancies from the tech giant, which laid off 11,000 employees in November 2022. In addition to the 10,000 jobs being lost, 5,000 open roles at the company will be left unfilled. These are your headlines. I'm Felicia rankin -Zollins. For the latest in news and information... Follow Radio Cayman on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Download the Radio Cayman app or log on to our website, radiocayman.gov.ky. The headline news are brought to you by Health Services Authority. HSA's Cardiology Clinic is now located at Smith Road Medical Center. Our cardiology team provides expert care and treatment for heart conditions such as coronary artery disease, heart failure, arrhythmias, hypertension, congenital heart diseases, among others. The new location offers state-of-the-art cardiac diagnostic testing, including echocardiograms, ECGs, and stress tests. To contact, call 949-8600. At HSA, your heart matters to us. Hinton Roxroy Connolly was born in Creek, Kimabrak on 9th of September, 1937. Fondly known as Big H to his family and friends, following a five-year career at sea, Mr. Hinton returned to Kimabrak, taking up work with Brack Power and Light Company for three years prior to moving to Grand Cayman, where he commenced employment with Cable and Wireless in March 1966. Big H would eventually move back to Kimabrak, working his way up from a linesman to a supervisor throughout the 29 years of employment with Cable and Wireless, eventually retiring in August 1994. Following his retirement, Mr. Hinton continued to do electrical work for the many people of Cayman Bragg. For medical lab services in Cayman, go straight to MedLab. Blood test, x-ray, and mammogram, all of that is MedLab. Affordable fees and friendly service, a full professional team. MedLab is always comfortable, MedLab is always clean. For medical lab services in Cayman, MedLab. Talk to Dick. But I do have some questions. Talk to Dick. Cayman Islands, foremost listeners participation program. Talk to Dick. Because... There are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Yes. Fantastic day. Ah, right here, really came out with Susan and then oh, that's good stuff. Well, we're talking about, you know, today being, you know, a day to celebrate Pi. And I don't know about you, but having, you know, PIE is nice if you could share it. But we're talking about the PI. So, Professor Roman, make sure I say Angelov, good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm feeling great. How are you? Oh, I am excellent. Well, uh, happy Pi Day. Happy Pi Day. You know, I've, uh, I remember the first time I was sort of formally introduced to it um, through our students and the excitement that we have. Oh, is, that, is that better? Yes, okay. it's perfect. Thank you. All right. And his colleague, Mr. Samantha Ashman. Good afternoon, Mom. How are you? Good afternoon. I'm doing well. Thank you. Friends. All right. Okay. If, before we get into to talking about, you know, Pi Day and its creation and the celebration, I think many of us sometimes we see maths and mathematics uh, in in a esoteric manner, uh, in a way that frustrates people, makes them fearful, and yet, as a, as a professor, you can guide me. Math is just a language. It's not impossible. Uh, it's not something that should <laughs> be for them. But let's try to get that uh, across to people as we celebrate and enjoy math. And it's not just for the accountants. It's not just for the engineers. It's for us who are at home trying to figure out, huh, I'm baking something and I need to get more guests to the table. How do I achieve this recipe, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's uh, math is not just for selected few. Mm -hmm. It used to be like that, by mm -hmm. the way, you yeah, know, many yeah, years yeah, ago. It yeah. was a privileged knowledge, yeah. but not anymore. And so more and more, it is in uh, it is in everyday life. Mm -hmm. But s coming to your original question, why some people feel scared of uh, mm -hmm. of maths? Mm -hmm. Why pe some people find it difficult? Mm -hmm. Well, there is something. 
there are some inherent reasons for that within mathematics. And one of them is that it is a hierarchical discipline. Mm -hmm. So you cannot uh, start today and in five days you've, you've mastered it. You have to go through primary school, then high school, and then if you study further. And every next level builds on the previous one. If you don't know the prerequisites for whatever you are studying, for the theory that you are studying now, then you'll be just lost. Mm -hmm. But is that part of the challenge then as we, we look at the teaching of any subject, but maths in particular, that we either teach to test, uh, I'm not trying to offend educators or even academic systems, but many times we want, uh, my older friends would talk about, you know, when they go into school, they have recitations, uh, they will have to, you know, wrote memory and they're like, that didn't work for me. I, I wanted to understand the thing and to understand that I understood it so I could apply it. But there were times when, even if you were doing a drama production, you had to remember the lines and you had to get it exactly. Ah, that didn't work for me, you know. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> as, as <laughs> Ms. Ashman, <laughs> welcome. Jump right in because I want to ask a question. Good hey, afternoon to you. Good afternoon. So a lot of persons do once they see math, they're like, no, yeah. no. <laughs> uh -huh. But what we encourage, um, even though we are specialists at this subject, what we encourage mm -hmm. persons is that you do actually see math every day, mm -hmm. even though you don't use it. So currently yeah. right now, even the time here, yeah. we're here. The date, mm -hmm. the pie day, it gathers something in us to know that we have to search a certain thing. So in what you're saying, we're, our education system, what happens is that sometimes there is a difference in mm -hmm. what persons or certain persons who are doing the curriculum see as fit. Mm -hmm. So what your teachers at the time saw as fit was drill and practice. Yeah. So they showed you the word, do that. You got an example and you were like, okay. I'm just going to copy that. But yeah. what a lot of the curriculums nowadays are doing is that they are asking that our students are the ones who are leading the mm. actual learning process and they're the ones who are going to discover mm -hmm. and they're the ones that are going to answer the questions using their daily knowledge and their daily experiences. Mm -hmm. So there has been some change since your <laughs> former years. So and with that too, as I come back to the professor, um, something that I'm hoping that we'll achieve today. Two, two objectives. I, I say like economics. You said math is everywhere, mm -hmm. economics is everywhere. And there's the qualitative and the quantitative. Uh, I don't say that lightly, I don't say that facetiously. Economics is in everything we do. We make decisions. Yeah. But so is math. Yes. Right? We've got five bucks. We want to buy some you know, petrol for our cars. <laughs> well, we're not going to get a gallon. Not at the prices. We but what do we do? Prices. <laughs> And then the second thing I want to do is, I, I heard a teacher say this, and I'm not convinced, but I'm 100% sure uh, in my mind that as she said it, she wished she could have taken it back. Uh, but it affected the children in class. She said, oh, I hate math. Math is for, not for girls. Math is for. Now, this is a grade school teacher, and that was a 1,000 years ago, and I still remember that. And... I don't know if I've ever been as angered in my life. <laughs> it was just... Uh, so, math for everybody? Math is for everybody. It's mm. more of which levels of math is for you. Ah. So even if, for instance, you're here, you're running a radio program, frequencies are taken into place. Mm -hmm. Without that, you wouldn't be broadcasting. <laughs> right, okay. So, and also the times that you do interviews are taken into place. So even though we don't think about it as us sitting down doing actual calculations on paper, you are actually doing it in your head where you're saying, okay, I have this person at, let's say, at four. Mm -hmm. I need to ensure that by 3.30 or so on, certain persons are in. Right. So the math, even for our younger generation, they see it mm -hmm. as not necessary. Because guess what? The topics that they cover in class are not the topics that, I'm being honest, is not the topics that they, they right. see every day. But what it allows and what it develops and what we encourage is that the critical thinking in learning these topics is what we actually um, dig on, well, dig into. Yeah. So it's not only the fact that, okay, you need to learn what um, what X is or how to graph that. The goal also is, to honest, is for you to think and see how you actually think and know that you are thinking mm. in a 
deeper way and the thoughts that you have are a little bit more connected mm-hmm. to things to build you or to grow you. Right. So, Professor, we from that perspective, we, we see, say, mass at uh, the first day of school and then mass at postgraduate uh, university. And there are all sorts of terminology. I mean, who knew that there were letters in math at one point, no symbols? And a friend of mine keeps saying, well, why do we find the X? Why is it getting lost all the time? It's right there. Uh, <laughs> so help us to... <laughs> But math is fun. I mean, it, it, it is. Uh, some of us are a little bit more adept at it. Some of us are a little bit more intrigued by it. Is there, initially, is there a thing in us, a trait, a characteristic, that would make us have a greater propensity to, to math? Well, math is an uh, uh, abstract discipline. Mm-hmm. So if you have uh, uh, propensity, ability of uh, abstract thinking, Mm. then you're a better position to study uh, mathematics. Because mm. as you said, it's an, a language, but mm. it's an abstract language. Mm-hmm. You see five apples, you can see three people. You cannot, you do not see three yeah. as a number. It's an, it's an, ab- it's an abstraction. Mm-hmm. So same is with uh, when it gets to algebra. By X, you do not the num- a number, mm. any number. Mm-hmm. So, and then you ask, but which one? So sometimes, uh, but which of these numbers is X? Mm-hmm. No, x can be any number. So if you have an equation, you then you need to find x which satisfies this uh, uh, this equation. So uh, I would like to pick up on the problem solving skills. Yes, yeah, yeah was, that's the second. Yeah, because this is the 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 issue that comes from grade one right up to up to university. Mm-hmm. In fact, in mathematics, the questions were normally we would call them problems. We just copy from other disciplines and we'll call them questions. Mm-hmm. If you read the book, then you've got uh, exercise, then you've got a problem, mm-hmm. problem se- uh, section. Because this is something that makes the exams more um, creating anxiety because there is something mm-hmm. unknown there that you cannot learn from before. You can prepare, but there is a, some, some battle that you have to fight there and then at the, at the exam. Mm-hmm. But this is also developing the problem-solving skills. And if you go to the job market, just read the, read the adverts. How many of them are just saying problem-solving skills, problem-solving skills? <laughs> mm-hmm. How do you, how do you uh, develop problem-solving skills? Well, in mathematics, we solve uh, uh, problems. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of uh, not sufficiently recognized uh, role of mathematics in school that it develops thinking and it develops problem-solving skills. You might not uh, use uh, any particular technical skills, let's say, of solving cubic equation, mm-hmm. uh, for that matter. But uh, the fact that you learn this, the, the fact that you practice it, mm-hmm. developed your brain, developed your problem-solving skills, and then you're ready to apply them to everywhere where your uh, job career takes you. Mm-hmm. Is it then that many of us see math as almost an abstract, right? But we see it as something that we only need, and we don't need to know it anymore. We have calculators, we have spreadsheets if we're accountants, but something as simply as Ms. Ashman just sharing. You're in a space and you want to get somewhere at a certain time, you know, speed, distance, and time, having that basic concept, well, how long would it take me, all the things we need, you know, the distance is five miles, I'm going to travel at, you know, this speed, how long would I take? If we understand that, that concept, we can apply it to our lives more efficiently. Yes. Um, just a funny little thing, um, for me to fly here, when I was coming to the Cayman Islands, I literally, when I reached, I think it was 48 kilometers, because that's what we use um, in Jamaica. When I so reached 40, I. Yeah, we use miles here. Yeah. <laughs> we use 40, when I was at 48 kilometers and I was looking at the, um, the speed that my mm-hmm. driver was driving, I was like, what's the time that I'm going to arrive? And I was like, working <laughs> on, a, on a paper. So I think that if we do sit down and we understand yeah. I understand you're not going to remember everything in math. I don't. I don't think Professor remembers everything in math. But what happens is that remember what we need to. Uh As well as continue to review and look at it. It's not something that, what I say sometimes to my students, you can't just put on a book today and then by next week when you have me again, that's the time you're opening it. 
is the same as if you're learning a new song. In order mm-hmm. for you to learn that catchy new tune, you heard it a thousand times on the radio. That's how you learn that right. tune. It's the same thing with math. It's the only thing that you have extra steps, basically. Oh. So with our students, a lot of thi- another thing that is an issue is, um, or may be an issue for our daily life, um, I'm thinking about pi d, and I'm thinking about the fact that pi is actually a number that is infinite. It continues on and on. So it takes into consideration memory. We don't ask students to sit mm-hmm. down and memorize what pi is. But what I'm thinking for the memory part is that students do need to tap into. Sometimes maybe it's just that they're maybe it's a lack of certain vitamins that can cause it. So sometimes parents may, maybe need to look into that that's an mm-hmm. issue or a factor another factor is that sometimes it's just they don't feel it applicable so certain topics a student may be strong in geometry but another student may be way stronger in um, trigonometry or something else so it also has to do with the attitude the memory tension and application I don't the application, application yes. yeah. <laughs> if you don't use it you lose it right yes. you know <laughs> the, the bodybuilder who has not trained for the longest time you know, we sell good physique, but not competitive, really. So with that, can we talk about applied math and consumer math? You know, mm-hmm. we, we hear those as teachers or as students. And maybe let me ask, what is consumer math? I, I've seen it. You, know, <laughs> you can Google it and look them up, but what is it? Well, all, I mean, it changes its name with, uh, with <coughs> times. Mm-hmm. You can, uh, it, it used to be home mathematics, <laughs> how, how you make uh, the calculations that, uh, that, yeah. you need, uh, that you need for, for, for home. So this is basically describes everyday uh, calculations. As you mentioned, the uh, distance and uh, time, converting gallons to liters, mm-hmm. uh, uh, kilometers per hour into, into miles per hour, and then calculating the surface area of your walls because you need to buy paint yeah. uh, for that. Uh, so all this is uh, out, uh, call it consumer math. But there is a, a new component that is coming into it mm-hmm. and makes our life uh, more and more complicated with more maths <laughs> getting in. Mm. Like we hear, for, for example, now about inflation and uh. we hear about uh, interest rate. Uh-huh. So let's say we've got $10,000. Uh, so we save $10,000 and we want to invest them in something. So our bank uh, tells us, well, please come here. We give you 4% interest. Mm-hmm. And since we're on Cayman, it's also tax-free. So we'll give you, uh, after a year, you're going to have 10400 But then we've got 8% inflation. Mm-hmm. So then once we take this uh, 8% uh, inflation uh, out of 10400 uh, I think we've got 9576 something like that, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. But we're at a loss. Mm-hmm. So that's why you hear now the investors, the hedge funds, they're hedging against inflation. They're not uh, uh, going for bonds, they're going for stocks. Mm-hmm. And this also the affects our everyday life because we all have uh, investments, like, like your pension. You choose how your pension should be uh, invested. Mm-hmm. Or for those who manage to save some money, you know how to preserve their how to preserve their their value. So, the point that I'm uh, raising is that the consumer maths, as it was uh, described probably last year or two years ago, is uh, the scope should be enlarged to in, to increase also those type of activities in which we are involved Mm -hmm. and which involve a lot of uh, mathematics like uh, interest, compound interest, uh, exponents, uh, and things like uh, hedging and uh, interest, etc. These are all mathematical concepts that are just uh, put in the language of uh, investment. So help us then, because I think increasingly we we some of us may be a little bit more uh, I would say inclined. Some of us can see it in our heads and work it out. And then the teacher says, well, show me your work. And you go, well, the answer is why? You know, <clears throat> we just can't put it in the paper. So maybe help us to get to that space. But also, when you talked about inflation and, and interest rates, the, the future value of money, that dollar today, you know, what is it worth 10 years, 50 years from now? 
what was you know the purchasing power of a dollar 50 years ago relative to today are there particular things we as people should know or could know that would help us to appreciate you know that 10,000 saved today um, what it'll be worth in 10 years now um, or what would we need you know in order to buy ten thousand dollars worth of well stuff. it is part of the of the uh, mathematics uh, curriculum mm -hmm. it is uh, to a small extent maybe uh miss ashman can mm -hmm. uh, help me here i think it is somewhere in t uh, in grade uh, six seven eight where we get the concept of uh interest and uh, compound yeah, interest? Yeah, it's a continuous, it's continuous they introduced, um, but some curriculums they introduce it and it's uh, in bulk, mm -hmm. so it depends on which curriculum, but usually grade 6 the basics and then mm -hmm. up to grade 8 or 9 they'll introduce it again. Yeah. So, But if I can uh, add uh, uh, to that, it uh, turns out that uh, after that we teach some sophisticated mathematics in grades 10, 11, 12, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, students often com uh, complete it with not very good uh, uh, marks, mm -hmm. and they miss on the important part which actually they need mm -hmm. to function adequately in uh, today's society. Mm -hmm. So the part that I'll call numerical literacy. Mm -hmm. you know, like we've got language literacy, you can't live today if you do not have uh, a numerical literacy. And in fact, we were uh, discussing with some uh, colleagues, non-mathematicians, just to make a course uh, mathematics for life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but that's essential. I mean, you, you look the examples you're given just now. Let's say someone is uh, looking for a storage container, a cistern, you know, for their you know their water. Uh, they want to know how many gallons they'll have, what size they, they needs to be built, you know, and how to calculate it. Uh, formulas that we probably know, don't realize we know, but if there are things like Ms. Ashman is sharing, if we were, are reminded, just like we know maybe the sounds of the alphabet in, in, in the English language, could we? But sometimes it's not that. It's sometimes we don't want, we want what we want persons to recognize is not just remembering formulas. Okay. What it is, is that sometimes it does not have to be a formula that you learned in school. It can be how you actually look at the problem. You looked at the problem and saw that, okay, this is the amount of gallons there. Mm -hmm. But I think about it. If I had one, it would be, let's say you start with 50. If I had one, it's 50. If it's mm -hmm. two, then it's 100. Mm -hmm. And if three, then it's... But it doesn't require you to remember a formula, but it yeah. requires you to basically just see it in front of you and be like... Okay, continue increasing it by a certain amount. So a lot of her, we don't want you to think that okay, I must swap this for my future life use. I must know this because okay, it has to be. I have to say it back word for word, just as how my teacher taught it. What we want um, students and what we want persons to be knowledgeable of is that learn it your way. Yeah, yeah. your way will stick better with you than someone else just having you drill it. Yeah, that's interesting though, because I think so. Some of us, uh, we adding up something, we'll get an answer. Sometimes we multiply, divide. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just you know two plus two always. Mm -hmm. So even though it's not just two plus two always, um, the co the concept of math basically, even if it's not like that, what you can do is that you can recom well not recommend you can mm -hmm. seek other person's help. Right. Because I know that most math teachers. They are happy to do math. <laughs> so what you can do is ask someone, can you help me with this? Or I need to have an idea of this. And the good thing is that it's not just math. Mm -hmm. It's the other occupations that surround math. Right. Engineers, um, painters or tilers, all those persons, they assist us. Um, even the persons from, um, I don't remember your water place. What's the water place called? We, we got two. You know, <laughs> so yeah, there's so water authority. Yeah. They use the math and you could speak with them and be like, okay, I have X, Y, and Z going on. Um, how can I get to here from this point? Mm. And so that's why we think that students need to recognize the importance of the of math that we do daily mm -hmm. in class. So how then do we get, because I think, Professor, you referenced at outset that it's a building process. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, I think back to what you shared with me. It's like a house. You know, we may know the roof that we want on the house, um, but the foundation isn't there, the supporting walls and all the other things then it's not going to work and you can't build a house from the roof. You have to put your foundation. So what are those steps, those building blocks, as we layer it to ensure mm -hmm. that we have the, the basics 
to give us a good grasp and confidence uh, in math? Yeah. Well, uh, it is uh, the, the building the mathematical concepts actually takes a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. of time. We don't recognize it, but the primary school is basically devoted to developing the concept of number. Mm -hmm. uh, arithmetic and rules is, uh, is all developed uh, at, that, at that time. And kids have to finish uh, primary school being fluent with this, uh, with this concept. Then comes the concept of algebra, when we can denote the number uh, by, by a letter. Mm -hmm. And then if we uh, miss this part, then uh, pretty much any further mathematics, calculus or higher mathematics, we just have to forget about it. Okay, Let, let's ask two, two questions. Um, there are words like calculus, trigonometry, mm -hmm. geometry, algebra. We mm -hmm. use those now. I mean, it's this thing going, I think I heard those before, but <laughs> what are they? <laughs> and then we want to talk about terminology and like. So may I ask Ms. Ashwin? Yeah. Define those. What is calculus? What is geometry? Because in school, I think uh, maybe one year they'll do one, and then another year they'll do another uh, wow. in some curriculums. Right. We don't really encourage, it's not really encouraged to do only one per yeah, <laughs> term. Right. But um, for geometry, geometry is basically just dealing with um, the shapes mm -hmm. and the solids that we deal with on a day to day basis. Um, or measurements, that's another um, strand that we have in math that has to do with the, well, as we say, measuring or standardizing mm -hmm. of each measurement. And then, am I missing any professor? I did <laughs> trigonometry, um, has to do with the relation of triangles, basically. Mm -hmm. Like your triangles. In your studio, mm -hmm. and then so I did geometry, trigonometry, and then algebra. No. Algebra, the mm. one that everyone hates. Yeah. I love the one. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> algebra is basically the unknowns, as Professor says. All the unknowns yeah. in our life is linked to the concept of algebra. And then you said consumer math, consu sorry, consumer arithmetic. Yeah. That has to do with our buying and selling of day-to-day mm -hmm. -day things. And then am I missing? I'm missing some more. Well, functions. Functions, functions. functions comes yes. after algebra. Yes. Which, yes, it comes off of algebra as well as the graphing, um, which is used in statistics. Statistics, I forgot, statistics. So statistics has to do with um, reading and uh, analyzing, interpreting data and following through with it, um, using it for future use. So I think that would cover most areas. And mm. Oh, and the higher level math now with um, our calculus, the differentiation, integration. <laughs> you took a big sigh. Those are the aspects that even though um, persons of um, lower grades don't use them. We actually use them even here, um, being here. Um, our engineers actually use them with, for instance, finding area, volume, mm -hmm. as you said, of, of the right. system. The calculus would be taken into place with the differentiation and integration of each um, value. Right. Equations. Yes. So, <laughs> and your second right. question? Yeah. yeah. Well, well <laughs> let's pause and take our, our break. When we come okay. back, let's talk about the terminology because yeah, we know there are words, you know, binomials. We, we lots of words in it. And I wonder if, again, as parents or even as adults, sometimes we present them very much similar to what I think, sadly, we do in Sunday school. You know, we'll teach a lesson, but we don't bother to give the facts. And we don't we change the names up. And we look at the child as not being smart enough or ready for the actual accurate information. To what extent are we affecting their, you know, their education and ability? All right, we're going to pause when we come back. Mm -hmm. And Great. maybe some brain teasers and math, huh? <laughs> All right. You'll give Professor one, he'll give you one, we'll see if they get it. All right, stay tuned. Join us after the break. A caring and community spirit, cherished family and cultural values. These are some of the things that still embodies the Caymanian way of life in the Eastern Districts today. Savannah Pharmacy, your neighborhood pharmacy, located in Countryside Shopping Village, is delighted to offer products and services of real value. Whether it's catering to your family's medical needs or carrying apparel, gifts and beauty products, Savannah Pharmacy provides you with more than just prescriptions. Remember, they are always just around the corner with everything your family needs and convenient opening hours, including Sundays and holidays. Savannah Pharmacy. For more information, call 946-3336. They say variety is the spice of life. And that's why at Subway, we're introducing the new boneless hot sub. Say what? 
The premium sub brings new ingredients like spicy breaded boneless chicken, French's crispy fried onions, and buffalo wing sauce, bringing a zesty and flavorful experience with every bite. Add some of your favorite veggies, cheese, and ranch sauce of your choice of freshly baked bread for the ultimate boneless hot sub. For a little spice in your life, try the new boneless hot sub from Subway. Hmm, so good and tasty. And make it a meal with a drink and chips or cookies. Subway. Eat fresh. Crystal Entertainment presents Sweet Sensation, a 70s, 80s, and 90s event. This is a grown-up event at the Grand Pavilion Courtyard, Friday, March 24th. Gates open at 7.30 p.m. You must be dressed in full black or full white and come on down and dance all night. Get your tickets early for the five free soul and 50 at the door. Entertainment by Mixmaster DJ, DJ Alec, DJ Dave, and for the first time in Cayman, Sweet Sensation welcomes DJ Omar C. Big outlet, event pro and fashion Martin Barton Building. Look at you, listening to the radio, tuning in, getting stuff done. Total doer. Maybe you're driving, maybe you're getting your oil changed, or grabbing some chicken. Maybe you're doing something that's nobody's business but yours. Hey, that's cool. We're all doing something. Now you can join a whole new community of doers doing more on findyellow.com. With custom search, local experts, and trusted reviews, whatever you're doing, get it done on findyellow.com. Radio Cayman News. It's disappointing that only limited progress has been made in implementing the recommendations made to improve Cayman's budgeting, financial management and reporting system. The Miami Herald is urging its readers to consider the Cayman Islands as their vacation destination this year. The Miss Cayman Islands Committee has been granted the Miss Universe license. Radio Cayman. Your voice, your choice for today's biggest news. Talk to Dick. But I do have some questions. Talk to Cayman Islands for most listeners' participation program. Talk to because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. And thanks for joining us. And as we celebrate Pi, I'll tell you more about it. Professor Roman Angelov, together with his colleague, Mr. Martha Ashman, at 100% Math. You know, and I'm going to come back asking what is pie and why is it, and you know why is there, you know, all about it. But first, as we're going through the break, we ask about terminology because yes. the more we get, you know, sort of go through school, uh, math goes from simple arithmetic to uh, being wait a minute, there are symbols and letters and all sorts of things happening, and there's a frustration usually amongst the parent, sometimes an exasperation on the part of the teacher, and then you know sort of taken on board by the child, but. <laughs> All right, with terminologies, I'm going to use one that a word that we do use or mm. will too. We have two of them. I'm going to use constant and I'm going to use interest. Uh -huh. Constant in our day to day life, we would say something is constant, it continuously happens. Mm. Now, when we start teaching that as basic algebra in seventh or eighth grade, they see it as just a number that does not care what we call a variable. Yeah. As they continue, when we reach higher level math, that same word constant is used in higher level math for integration. Mm -hmm. So after you have integrated I have an equation. Now, even though we are doing different aspects of math and we are dealing with life, the word constant remains constant. It does not change. <laughs> so what happens is that it, what actually happens is your thought or how you think mm -hmm. it is actually being built. So you started out with a constant just being a number that you see without a variable. Then it built up to being something that you maybe have used at school. I have a constant, um, I constantly get homework. I'm constantly getting homework from Miss Ashman. Miss Ashman is constantly giving me homework. And then from moving it, from using it in daily life, then when that, that child reaches um, higher level math, they're using it and seeing, okay, they have to find constant for after integrating, which is basically just like, an, it's a va it's the C that is used to show that we have integrated, but we're not sure of the value that should be there. Mm -hmm. So after, it requires some graphing and etc. But what I'm saying is that for terminologies, it has to do with a lot of, as Professor said, um, the literary exchange that we do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know what does it mean in your language versus what it means in my language. That So a language barrier is an issue as well. If a teacher is not able to define it and while defining it, explain it in a way that is specific mm -hmm. 
to the topic and then even though they teach it specific to that topic the student must be aware that that terminology can mm. extend to either another topic another strand of math or even another subject mm -hmm. so it has to do with the transition that each teacher and each grade level that each child is exposed to so it's all about basically transitioning so to have an ease of terminologies and to have comfort with terminologies we encourage students to even create math dictionaries in certain grades we encourage students to state so what i do when you're telling me the reason to do this you have to state that and this generation know they have a thing to use the word it <laughs> for everything <laughs> So I have to encourage not using the word it, but use the terminology relating to math. Is it a variable that you're adding? Are you adding a number? Is it from a real number or integer? Don't just use the word it, because using the word it is basically telling me either IT or industrial technology. <laughs> so I have to be like, okay, what are we exactly doing? So the terms that you use, especially for algebra are important as well as the math operations and the things that you're applying another problem that students tend to have is word problems mm -hmm. so yes we test them on that a lot of exams have word problems being tested but a lot of students have problem translating it to become a numerical statement and i believe that the issue is that the day-to-day -day conversations that they have with their parents and their peers they're not including certain um, vocabulary into that so what happens is that okay if I for instance proportion um, students aren't able to compare that if I have this size thing here and I increase it so if I have a triangle here mm -hmm. and that triangle has an area of um, let's say 12, 12 centimeters square and they increase or expand that triangle students are not seeing that a fraction that mm -hmm. or ratio can be shown or it can be used to actually show this increase. So what happens is that when they do have problem solving and they need to use proportions and cross multiplication, they're not able to link that, okay, I learned this in geometry. How can I translate the same proportion, the same terminology of proportion? How can I translate this now to my consumer arithmetic? They're unable to do that because they're not seeing the same comparing. So it has a lot mm. to do with the terminology for true. So, so professor with that in then teaching, um, is it too late to learn math? You have the 40-year-old, the 50-year-old who wants to maybe understand it. Who knows career change versus the 4-year-old? I mean, is it is it too late to get the, the basics of math and to become more adept uh, at, at mathematical equations? Yeah. Well, I don't think at 14 is uh, uh, too late. Mm. Uh, it is uh, probably about uh, the latest time that one uh, should consider getting mm -hmm. strongly involved with uh, mathematics if they could consider career in mathematics. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, well, mathematics is not for old people. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> 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 am I contradicting myself here? No, but, but, but uh, yeah. the, the prize, the, uh, the highest prize in mathematics is the Fields Medal, and it is given only to mathematicians under 40. So mm. everybody, they, it is believed that if you have uh, made any uh, major achievement in mathematics, you should have achieved it before you are before 40. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, suggest that for anybody who tries to get involved into uh, mathematics or discipline which is with strong mathematical foundations, 14 is about the uh, latest mm -hmm. time that uh, mm -hmm. they should get uh, involved. Yeah. Well, having said that, I don't want to be absolute. It's never too late to <laughs> learn. Yeah. I have friends that have never studied maths and then now, uh, uh, well, they made a lot of money uh, different ways and now they've got uh, passion for mathematics and they're 35, 40 and they say no, I want to come and study mm -hmm. this. I said no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No. There, is, uh, there is no strict uh, rule, mm -hmm. but when one is planning the, their own life or the, or the lives of their, of their child, they have to be mindful of, uh, of that. What, what you miss in grade uh, 8 might yeah. uh, be not easy to recover when you go further because there are new things that come and they rely on what you know and what you should know and then you don't know it and it becomes a whole uh, becomes a big problem and then with the teaching because I think it has a lot to do with the way we present something mm -hmm. some of us know the information but we just can't convey it yeah. uh, whether it's a sport or whether it's even math but with the importance of math in everyday life I mean we need to have 
I I would not in the I would not um I would not demotivate someone let's say someone who is thirty late thirties mm. they're thinking about a career change and what they recognize is that okay I do not have certain qualifications for instance I don't have math CXE what I do not I would not demotivate someone to go and try that I would not say no <laughs> but what I do encourage persons is to do is that math it may not be for everyone in remembering everything but there is an aspect that you may be able to apply yourself to mm-hmm. so for persons starting so we all right let me start from uh, um from different levels we have our youngest children who we do have some who are gifted mm-hmm. those students are able to do higher level math even though they should for instance maybe have a nine-year-old a ten-year-old maybe even younger we do have younger st- children and they are able to do math that persons in college are doing then we have someone who is at a college level but they have challenges with um addition multiplication but we should not demotivate them just as how we don't demotivate someone to learn um reading because we do have persons who are of certain age we encourage them learn to read and learn to write so as we say math is a language we should encourage that language especially the building of its basics especially the building of things and the research done to find out what is it that it would um what is what is it that relates to you mm-hmm. and what you need so continue to research continue to practice have an insight seek um professional help for it and even th- even though you might reach a certain age and be like, no, not for me, it is possible that when you do attempt it and you put in the effort, you put in the practice, you put in the work and you try that math question or you try to learn that math concept, you actually do well. So okay. just give it a try. How do you then assess someone? Um, there's an evaluation. You want to know where they are. They want to upskill themselves in math. Uh, what do you do? I use the word assess. Mm-hmm. There may be a, a more appropriate word that you may choose to see their proficiency, see what level they're at, in order to ensure that you're giving them, uh, the, you know, the best. Uh, okay, so a lot of places, what we'll do, uh, especially here at One Hundred Percent Math, is that we run a diagnostic. So for students, new students who are entering, we run a diagnostic test for those students. And what happens is that the diagnostic test actually has a uh, I don't remember that word to say it right now, but in statistics, it it, it brings certain data up front. Mm-hmm. So it highlights what are your red zones, what are your yellow zones, what are your green zones. So those are the zones that um, your tutor now would, or your person, or your teacher, that person would zone in onto and say, okay, you're weak in algebra, but you're great at geometry. So that teacher getting you at that level to the algebra now, the assessment that they do after. So that's the assessment before learning. So we're doing the diagnostic. Then after that, no, we teach you or we facilitate your learning. You learn something and then we test you. So the beauty about evaluation and assessment is that you can do it while learning and you can do it after the person has learned. Mm -hmm. So a lot of teachers, what they do, they start out with, okay, a basic question. And you you climb each level according to the web's depth of knowledge and according to many other philosophers that persons use. So um, some places use Bloom's taxonomy, some places use depth of no- web's depth of knowledge to assess your critical thinking levels, to assess which level are you at. After they do that, now the different assessments, so for instance, our CXC, we have our um, IB, we have our city and girls. Then you decide or your teacher may can say, okay, CXC is not for you, but try city and girls. And don't feel any any way about that, city and girls. That's your math. That's your level. You attempt that. And you'll see that, okay, I score excellent at this. Because you were assessed based on mm-hmm. where you are in your math. And then from your city and girls, you'll be like, okay, can I try CSEC? Let me try CSEC. And then it depends on what do you need that assessment for. Do you need the qualification for work? Do you need it for just um, mm-hmm. personal? Right. But with your assessments or with the different assessments that are used it happens while learning it happens before learning it happens after learning but it all what at the end of the day what is important is that after you assess what's the next step that you take Mm -hmm. are you going to continue to practice is it that you're going to fall back and be like oh yes i've mastered it i don't need to continue anymore Mm -hmm. because there is always an aspect in math that 
even I <laughs> will have a weakness at and you need to just continuously work on it, assess yourself, see where you are, then work on it again, <laughs> assess yourself and it's a continuous pattern. So a lot of schools we use tests as evaluations but that's not the only way to evaluate because if you're a person who is a visual learner or if you're a person who is a kinesthetic learner, kinesthetic learner, yeah, yeah. Um, what teachers try their best to do is that they're assessing you based off your learning while they still have to meet their quota of ensuring that you complete or you do very well on a test. So don't think that, okay, Miss taught me this way, but I, I stick with this way, where if you're only taught how to do it visually, Mm-hmm. You're, so as a visual learner, your teacher um, stimulated that visual learning. But then after that, your teacher did, she gave you a test and it had nothing with the visual. So do, you, um, it. do you also assess your students to determine their learning style with their visual, kinesthetic and the like? Yes, and it's not one learning style. Nobody has one learning mm-hmm. style. You just have one, maybe one that you prefer to know. Yeah. And it depends on what time, how you feel. And the subject and as well. Yes, and yeah. the subject as yeah. well. So the learning, well, and as you were saying for assessment, your assessment is also done based off your learning style. Mm-hmm. Because if you're a student that loves to draw, I'm going to give you something for you to draw. And you right. will explain yourself better with the drawing than you'd explain with when the algebra works. statement. Yeah. So, okay. yes. so when we come back, can we talk more about pie? What is it? <laughs> Why is it important? And how is it relevant to... It's a delicious meal. <laughs> oh, I got a taste for... <laughs> Chocolate pie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chocolate silk pie. <laughs> anyway, let me pause and <laughs> fasten the butter. When we come back, please rejoin us. Busy, busy, busy. Feel like there's not just enough hours in the day. Savannah Pharmacy, service to make your life easier. Now you can WhatsApp your prescription order to 929-5045. And pickup is just around the corner with everything your family needs and convenient opening hours including Sundays and holidays. WhatsApp your prescription order to 929-5045. Savannah Pharmacy, wholesome values with modern conveniences. From boat days to beach gatherings, Leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with With optional optional cookie cookie platters platters for for dessert. dessert. Or ask about our Subway box to go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one One cookie cookie and and one one bag bag of chips. chips. For all occasions and celebrations, let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit Subway.ky for catering options. Subway. Eat fresh. The best foundation you can wear is glowing, healthy skin. The offices of dermatologist Dr. Wien Porter specialize in enhancing your skin's well-being. Whether you're seeking advanced skin care, including any skin cancers, Botox, filler, cosmetic skin enhancements, or simply looking to reduce wrinkles, Dr. Porter offers a full-service dermatology and dermatological surgery practice. For more information, email drporterkman at gmail.com or call 946-9020. That is 946-9020. KBAT Turtle Conservation and Education Center invites you to join them on Sunday, 19th March for their third annual Turtle Crawl 5K Walk and Run. All funds raised from the event will support the conservation of green sea turtles in the Cayman Islands. So come on out and show your support. The third annual Turtle Crawl 5K Walk and Run, Sunday, 19th March. Learn more and register now at www.turtlecrawl.ky. Proudly sponsored by CUC, Cayman National, Walkers, Rotary Central, Advanced Fire Services, Gatorade, and Ray. But I do have some questions. Talk to Cayman Islands for most listeners' participation program. Talk to because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back. And thanks for joining us. And I'm hoping in particular to our parents that we'll encourage, you know, an enthusiastic embrace of mathematics as we celebrate Pi Day. Uh, Professor Roman, together with his colleague, Ms. Samantha, over 100% math. We were asking about assessments and the like, and I think many times as educators and as parents, we want to, that's a word that we use, one of the hardest things is working. Share with us, uh, Professor. Well, the, what do, the question that was raised before was what do we expect from assessment? Mm-hmm. Well, mathematics is not about procedures or memories. 
uh, or, or recipes that we have to uh, remember. Uh, mathematics is about thinking and understanding. As uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ashman mentioned before, we see one concept in different circumstances, in different settings, mm -hmm. in different contexts. In more contexts we can recognize it, the better we understand it. It's like when you read a book, you, you read a book when you're 10 years old and you said, well, this is great, I understood it. Then you read it when you're 20 and say, oh, now I understood <laughs> it. You read it when you're 45, then you say, oh, now I understand what is this, uh, yeah. what is this about. So understanding depends also, also on the level of uh, development. So that's why we need to repeat some uh, concepts over and uh, over again as students go, they progress through the, through the grades. And I mentioned one is the, uh, the concept of number, the other concept is a variable, the, and the other concept is the concept of function. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes uh, a lot of time to, to develop uh, um, this uh, concept. And uh, to emphasize that mathematics is not about recipes, but it's about understanding and uh, thinking. We, in most of the exams, we actually give the formulas to the to the students, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. most of ex uh, exam uh, exams are with the calculator. But I also explain to my students that nobody is going to pay you to push the buttons of the calculator. This is too low skill. Mm -hmm. So we're giving it. Uh, you you can use it here, but it is not what you are going to be assessed on whether you can use the calculator. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be assessed on whether or not you can use the, form, the, the formula, the booklet with, with the formulas. Mm -hmm. We are going to test you on your, on your understanding. All this is available. How are you going to use these resources to solve this particular problem that is in the, in the, in the, in the examination paper? Mm -hmm. So this is uh, one uh, aspect which is... Uh, quite, uh, I believe, specific uh, for mathematics. This is part of the magic that it, it has in the minds of uh, uh, many, when it's, whether it comes to job or study career or uh, whatever, but uh, very often is used as a substitute mm -hmm. for are you able to think mm -hmm. yeah. or how skillful you are in problem problem solving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it also takes in like your conceptual understanding, your problem solving um, strategies, your attitude to the learning actually, and as well as your procedural fluency. So we as teachers have to take into that, in, take into consideration all of that, as well as parents do, as well as the student themselves have to take that into consideration. So do I know what do I know to connect this to what I have done? Mm. What are the formulas that I need? What is the pieces of information that I need to solve this? Then what are the steps that I'm going to do to solve it? And then am I in the mood to actually work a question like this? Mm -hmm. So we have to also take into the um, take into the aspect the mental state that the person is as well. Mm. I know it's much when you have a, a commitment shortly. So but uh, Professor, mm -hmm. you'll be able to remain with us after the news. And uh, I want to generate that excitement and interest in mass. Uh, as, you, you know, as you get ready to, to um, let's look at two things, statistics yeah. and probability. Okay. Right? <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, we might remember the example of the day, you know, we flipped yeah. over and how much times. Or the coin. Or the coin. And, mm -hmm. and, and what can you say to those listeners so that they appreciate that this is every day, mm -hmm. but it isn't as ill-conceived or, or, or a far-fetched concept as we make it out, you know, theoretically sometimes? Statistics and probability. All right. For that aspect, a lot of, um, for me personally, I see it more as graph and what ifs. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's more like that. Mm -hmm. So with the statistics part, um, persons will look at it and it will be horrible for some persons but mm. it has to do with your scaling it has to do with your thinking it has to do with your idea of concept of what has happened and your timing so probability the aspect of probability taking that into consideration is if i do this what's the response for yeah. that so um in math we Notice that it's not something that is repetitively seen or mm -hmm. repetitively used. But we do use it at a day-to-day -day basis where if I go to the bank at 10, mm -hmm. what is the probability that it, it will be full? 
in my head, I'm like, I'm not going to the bank at nine because I know it's going to be full with persons just entering. Mm. That's something that persons apply as a probability, but they don't see it as I have right. done so. So give us the example. Everybody sees it in school. It's a dice. It's mm-hmm. six-sided. Oh. You roll it. <laughs> your probability that one will come up. Yeah. I mean, All right. So with the dice, um, and remember, we have different shaped dice. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> mm-hmm. we do the six-sided one in classes. And usually what the students do is that you give them a certain, a specific number of rows that they'll do. And they'll record how many have they gotten. Mm-hmm. But what we notice, is, what we do know is that um, the specific probability is that for a die, once it's um, an unbiased yeah, <laughs> die, yeah, yeah, yeah. it will roll to either either side and it's a probability that you'll get one out of the six sides. Mm-hmm. We're very rare for it to be on a, <laughs> on any other edge or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So what students will do is that they'll roll that die that specific number of times, they record their results. When they record their results, now what we encourage is also, um, the word is at the tip of my tongue, sorry, um, accuracy <laughs> in um, in record keeping. So maybe if I'd given them 10 times to roll the die, they have to do that three times. So basically they're doing 30 times. Mm. And then from that data, now they've gathered their data. So now they assess their data. Mm. What is it that I get from this? Okay, I got mostly twos. So my probability of getting a two is higher than my probability of getting a four with this specific die. Now, we do know we have to take into consideration other things like the climate, the table, what am I using? But the probability and the statistics that is involved would be very basic because what we're doing is, for instance, let's look at the example of playing Ludo. Do you guys play Ludo? Yeah, I'm not sure. We have Ludo and we have... Um, let me go with snakes and ladders. The probability, <laughs> in order for you to start snakes and ladders, you must get a six or a one. It depends on which board game you use. Yeah. And what's the probability of you getting a six? Then you're like, please let me get a six, please let me get a six, please let me get a six. But then you get a four. The probability of getting a four was one out of six. Mm-hmm. But is it that my die is biased? No, the, another example that persons use for statistics and probability is the coin. So some mm. of us, um, there are some persons who do it like, persons who have decision-making issues, they actually use coins to assist them. So they'll have their favorite coin and be like, okay, I'm going to flip this coin every time I need to make a decision. Mm. Do I eat pizza or do I eat burger? Burger is, <laughs> burger is tail, pizza is head. Or do I cook or do I eat out? And when they flip that and they'll say, okay, first in every um, one go. Sorry, um, the best in three, I should say, Mm -hmm. or the best in six. If you get, like, the burger and you don't want the burger, you're like, no, I'll I'll do the best in five instead of best in three. Hmm. And (laughs) another example example of us using it is actually rock, paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. What's the probability that the person, aside from you, would choose the one that you would win. So that's a basic, that's a common game of um, mm. probability. So we do use it. We just don't label it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, thank you for joining, Professor. And maybe we'll come back and chat <laughs> next time. And uh, after the break for the news, Professor, we'll talk more. And, and maybe we'll get in some, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe fluid dynamics. <laughs> we can look at the, the whole idea of mathematical Enjoy. modeling. Uh, <laughs> I'm willing to learn. All right. right. We're going to pause. Mr. Martha, thanks for joining us. For those who are listening, if you have a question, you know, math, you want to find what your retirement income should be, we can answer that for you. So stay tuned. Today's biggest news. Radio K-Man. Your voice, your choice. Local, regional, international. This is Headlines from Radio K-Man's newsroom. Today's biggest news. Brought to you by Tropical Plaza on Smith Road. With your latest headlines, I'm Felicia rankin Solens. The Lands and Survey Department will be holding a community meeting at the East End Civic Centre on Thursday, March 23rd, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Residents of East End are invited to come out to discuss and seek clarification on land-related matters. Refreshments will be served and there will be prizes. In international news, police in Canada say they believe that a driver of a truck that hit and killed two pedestrians in a town of northern Quebec did so intentionally. The act was premeditated, police said, but the suspect chose the victims at random. Nine others were injured in the incident, including a baby and a toddler. Three of the victims remain in hospital in critical condition. 
U.S. President Joe Biden is set to issue an executive order that aims to increase the number of background checks conducted before firearm sales. It aims to move the U.S. as close to universal background checks as possible without additional legislation. The Democratic president will sign the measure during a visit Tuesday to Monterey Park, California, where a gunman killed 11 people in January. These are your headlines. I'm Felicia rankin Zollins. Today's biggest news. Radio K Man, your voice, your choice. Local, regional, international. This is Headlines from Radio K Man's newsroom. Today's biggest news. Brought to you by Tropical Plaza on Smith Road. Row Row Variety, centrally located in Tropical Plaza on Smith Road, carrying a wide range of household items, bathroom accessories, towels, clocks, handbags, clothes, shoes, jewelry, and more, and more, and more. You can buy from the big box retailers or support local. The better deals come from shopping local. Row Row Variety Store, Tropical Plaza, Smith Road, telephone 924-9553. Between the traffic, the meetings, kids' activities, there just isn't enough time. Best Health Pharmacy was a game changer. Not only are they centrally located on Eastern Avenue, but they deliver prescriptions for free anywhere in Georgetown and West Bay. I could not believe it. When my prescription ran out, they ran it back to me. Best Health Pharmacy, located at Crown Square Plaza on Eastern Avenue, across from Edie's Decor, offering free prescription delivery anywhere in Georgetown and West Bay. Call 949-1301 or WhatsApp your prescription to 924-5358. Best Health Pharmacy. Your health, your convenience is their priority. Talk to Dick. But I do have some questions. Talk to Dick. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk to Dick. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. And thanks for joining us. I'm really honored for the opportunity to be reminded I was in school and I don't have a test to take. Professor Romain Angelo joins us, and the idea that on, you know, Pi Day, we get to talk about it and hopefully encourage us as adults to be more mindful as to how we interact with math, what we say and do around our children, that inadvertently sometimes we could, you know, put them off when you think of math, but math is every day, uh, from calculating the change to, well, whenever we had checkbooks and reconciling the money in our bank accounts to figuring out, you know, we're going to get a mortgage, the interest rate is now, how much are we going to pay back? It's not just simple math, but it's simply that we should be a little bit more comfortable with math. Yes, uh, absolutely. It is, uh, Pi Day is actually, mm -hmm. the idea of Pi Day is mm -hmm. not just to, to celebrate the number Pi. Mm -hmm. It is, actually, I, I got the original, uh, a decision by mm -hmm. the House of Representatives of the United States. Mm -hmm. And the last statement says, encourages schools and educators to observe the day with appropriate activities that teach students about pi mm -hmm. and engage them about the study of mathematics. Mm -hmm. So the emphasis, I would say, is on the latter rather than the, than the former. Mm -hmm. Because the pi is one number. It is, to a large extent, I see it as a symbol of the mathematics which goes beyond accounting. Mm -hmm. As uh, Ms. Ashman said, it's an infinite decimal. We cannot write it as a decimal okay. number, so that's why we, we use the letter, the letter pi for it. Uh, and uh, there is a lot of uh, mathematics which comes beyond the integers and the fractions. Mm -hmm. And this... Uh, uh, mathematics mm -hmm. has more and more implications for uh, everyday life. So it is, uh, it and it comes to everyday life in uh, in our everyday life in in different ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes like a new car. Y yeah, I yeah. mean, somebody actually designed this this car, yeah. and it was uh, absolutely mathematics, which is beyond accounting that was involved in the design 
engine and uh, uh, body and uh, and everything comes as a new smartphone. Mm -hmm. Somebody designed uh, the smart the smartphone. All this uh, technology, it, it is well known that the, uh, all the new technologies, from the nanotechnology up to uh, uh, cars or sending uh, rockets to Mars, they all have got mathematical foundations. Mm. And they are also a driver to developing mathematics uh, further and further. Mm. And Pi is uh, kind of symbolizes our general awareness that this mathematics uh, is there and it works for us and whether or not uh, we are aware of that it is uh, part of uh, it is part of our life yeah so professor with that maybe uh, math in particular right, instead of mathematics and its use uh, hoping we get a chance to appreciate two things first is that yes we engage in it almost unconsciously uh, even when we're at a supermarket and we're doing stuff. Our, our mother used to play a game. Uh, I think, you know, it was to help us to keep track of what funds we had, but I believe as she's shared more and more, that was her way to develop our math skills. So on the shelf, there are items and you knew how much it was and you would do it. And you get this mental math. So we can play games to improve our, uh, our, our mathematical ability. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Every uh, problem that we solve mm -hmm. is also is also a game. Mm -hmm. That you're given certain circumstances and you have to win. You have to find the right number or uh, the correct uh, the correct uh, answer. Mm. Uh, games are also very important uh, in the mathematical theory uh, by itself. You mentioned early economics. Yeah. Yeah. If we go beyond the home economics, but we go into the economics uh, theory, uh -huh. uh, the concept of uh, equilibrium in, in economics is uh, quite an important one. Because you've got players which are with different uh, strategies. Mm. Everybody wants to, yeah. to win. So everybody wants to make uh, returns above the average. Mm -hmm. So after I say it, everybody makes return above the average. You can understand that this is not possible. If somebody is making above the average, then somebody is yeah. uh, making below or he is losing on the, mm -hmm. on the market. So how does uh, this system, uh, how can we keep this system to be, to be stable? Mm -hmm. uh, and that is uh, where John Nash, uh, you might remember him from the movie Brilliant uh, Mind, uh, he uh, actually came came up with a concept which now is known as the Nash equilibrium yeah. in the in economics, mm. and that is how uh, opposite uh, uh, strategies are balanced uh, so that the whole system works, yeah. and it works in. Uh, with some sort of, uh, of with in some sort of uh, optimality, and, and maths and its application. You know, look at labor, for instance, and you know, st sticking with economics, the idea that it, countries, governments, sometimes at the demand of its citizens, are looking for a, a minimum wage, a minimum price control, or the like. But as a business, if the minimum wage is set you know, at a certain level, they may want more labor than is willing. To, to work for that level, if it's at, at a higher level, more laborers may want to come into the market than people are willing to buy. So finding that equilibrium, uh, you may not think of it, but it's a mathematical computation. Yeah, uh, well, absolutely. Uh, and whether the a business, uh, a CEO, whether they like it or not, mm -hmm. you know, they have to optimize all these uh, uh, criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned government uh, uh, mandated uh, minimum wage, mm -hmm. but in many industries, actually, there is a minimum wage mandated by the company uh, right. because they want their uh, employees to be happy, to have enough time to rest, to come to work mm -hmm. uh, and be uh, productive. So they say th uh, state these minimum standards for their for their workers mm. uh, in order to to ensure 
that when the worker comes at the workplace, they're efficient and they and they're productive. Mm-hmm. So this is a optimization problem that has to be uh, solved because uh, it, it's minimax. You try to uh, maximize your profits, but on the other side, you uh, you don't want to maximize your profits short term, and then you you lose your the efficiency, the effectiveness of your working force. Okay. So. Um this is happening in the in the in business management actually right. every day. With that, some would probably see that as a qualitative versus a quantitative analysis, but take the work day for instance or the work week or how many uh, how much time one gets off or say on vacation, paid otherwise. But there are some people who would be able to assign a value, a mathematical value. They would like X t- time off days, weeks in order to you know, travel, to enjoy their labor, to unwind, you know, whether it's the, the weekend. And then there's a cost factor. Uh, I've said publicly, as, as a way to encourage discussion, to appreciate the importance of it, that maybe we consider a four-day work week. We saw it in Germany. We saw it in 2008 um, in, in the U.S. state of Utah, that it can increase productivity, profitability, and the whole you know, enjoyment of people. But some would say, you're missing a day. Surely you're you're losing, but you actually can get more, and we can do that mathematically to assign a value. Absolutely, mm-hmm. the uh, the issue is not how much time you spent at work. The issue is how much work you have accomplished, mm-hmm. and for that matter, that is the way we teach also, also our students. Now mm-hmm. that the exams are coming and the parents are coming hard on them, you know, study mm-hmm. hard. See, not uh, study hard, study smart. Study smart, yeah. Don't start, don't measure the work that is done by the hours that you spent on it. Mm -hmm. Measure it by the work that has been done. What has been actually accomplished? And that this is the company who thinks thinking this way are the one that the the ones that actually uh, increase Mm -hmm. the the free time. They in fact they in some company they make it mandatory. You're not allowed to come to work, or you're uh, to be engaged with uh, anything, uh, anything other than than work, on this day that is given uh, yeah. that you're given off. We're speaking to Professor uh, Roman Angelov, and there's a message from our system. Uh, one of our listeners asking, uh, and I just really quickly and said, you know, he enjoyed math, but struggled in math as much as he wanted to to embrace it and to learn it. He just struggled from the very first day of school. You know, his, uh, the word he used, his fear just got increasingly worse every day, every grade. Uh, he managed to get to university as a, you know, working in the finance sector, but math has always been for him a challenge. What advice do you have for someone who is no longer, you know, afraid of math? How well, let's start with struggle. Okay. Struggle is not bad. Struggle is good. Uh-huh. If you want to be a good a- athlete, you're going to struggle. You have to run around the, the stadium uh, for a long, uh, for a yes. long time. <laughs> and you have to uh, exercise your, your, your muscles. It's a struggle and it's, it's a sweat. So it is, uh, it's not different in, uh, in mm. maths. It is a well-deserving uh, uh, topic, mm. mathematics, to spend your effort and, and time on. So. By all means, struggle, but you st- struggle and achieve. If you struggle and you do not achieve, then there is a problem. Mm-hmm. And you have to adjust something. You should not continue struggling in the same, uh, in the same way. Yeah. Maybe it comes back to what you shared then. Uh, do we have the final break, Ms. Susan? And, and maybe when we come back, if it's okay, help us if we were starting out now. And you talked about the foundations because it's, it's hierarchical. You got to build. You got to ensure that you get the the basic concepts, and then as you layer it, what those concepts should look like. How do we revisit that? Uh, either because we have a particular examination coming up, or because for our own enjoyment and edification, to step back from that fear uh, of numbers and and the like. Could you help us with that so that we maybe at the end of the day, as we look at pi? We go home and enjoy a nice chocolate or pecan or chocolate pecan, but we also don't feel so fearful when it comes to, to numbers. 
All yes, right. all right, we can do that. We're gonna do that. Stay tuned for talk today. And community spirit, cherished family, and cultural values. These are some of the things that still embodies the Caymanian way of life in the Eastern Districts today. Savannah Pharmacy, your neighborhood pharmacy, located in Countryside Shopping Village, is delighted to offer products and services of real value. Whether it's catering to your family's medical needs or carrying apparel, gifts, and beauty products, Savannah Pharmacy provides you with more than just prescriptions. Remember, they are always just around the corner with everything your family needs and convenient opening hours including Sundays and holidays Savannah Pharmacy for more information call 946-3336 for medical lab services in Cayman go straight to MedLab for a full range of medical services pleasant clean and comfortable environment no long lines and affordable fees visit MedLab at the Smith Road Plaza open Monday to Friday 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and half day on Saturdays Call 949-7331 to make your appointment. Lab services in Cayman. Med Lab. Row Row Variety, centrally located in Tropical Plaza on Smith Road, carrying a wide range of household items, bathroom accessories, towels, clocks, handbags, clothes, shoes, jewelry, and more, and more, and more. You can buy from the big box retailers or support local. The better deals come from shopping local. Row Row Variety Store, Tropical Plaza, Smith Road, telephone 924-9553. It's Tuesday, and you know what? That means it's two for one Taco Tuesdays and it's happening all day long at Tucker Restaurant and Bar located in East End and West Bay. Who doesn't love tacos, especially when they're two for one? Featuring specialty tacos like peanut chicken, blackened fish, pulled pork, vegetarian, and coconut shrimp. And of course, all of your favorites. Enjoy two for one tacos and two for one margaritas every Tuesday at Tucker Restaurant and Bar all day long in East End and West Bay. Talk to Dick. But I do have some questions. Talk to Dick. Cayman Islands, for most listeners' participation program. Talk to Dick. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome, Mike, and thanks for... Joining us in the studio, Professor Roman Angelov. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Kind of late now, Roman, right? Yes, that's okay. correct. Thank you. Okay, no, no. I never assume, but I think I was comfortable in making that. I, I I appreciate my my parents, my mother in particular, for encouraging industriousness and education uh, and math. I'm not I'm not going to say I am smart at it, but certainly not going to be willing to shy away from it. But I know many of us are, you used the word struggle, and I thought that's a good thing, so thank you, fearful, and we see all sorts of things. But maybe it's the way it was introduced to us. Maybe it's the way we approach it. Maybe we just didn't quite understand the terminology. What's an integer? We might be comfortable with, well, I know a numerator versus a denominator, but beyond that, an improper fraction. And then as we go from one grade to the next, by the time the child is at grade six, we're lost. Right, help us to appreciate that, that foundation, the approach, and maybe not so fearful anymore. Yes, well, uh, the enemy of fear is understanding. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are always fearful of something that we do not understand. And in mathematics, you have this hierarchical structure mm -hmm. that things build up. And once there are three words in the sentence that you do not understand, then you cannot understand what the sentence, uh, the sentence means. Uh, one needs to get comfortable with the mathematical uh, language uh, through the S1 progresses through the, through the classes. You ask me what is the, um, to kind of break down, what mm -hmm. are the stages of, uh, Mm, like like the house, yeah. we build. We've got foundations. We've got walls. We've got a uh, slab. We've got a second story. We've got uh, we've got a roof. How does this work in uh, in mathematics? So this cannot be precise, uh, but we start with uh, 
in uh, school with numbers and arithmetic, operations with numbers. And you think that this is trivial. Well, in a way it is trivial, but how many people can add half and a third without getting a calculator or getting a pizza, you know, and cutting it into, mm -hmm. into, six, uh, into six places? Yeah. Uh, uh, so this skill is not uh, uh, so common. So what is the sum of uh, one third and one sixth? Mm -hmm. Well, it's half, apparently, but... Uh, <laughs> How do we know, right? Uh, yeah. You have to be able to, yeah. uh, to work it out. So, uh, with that, you develop this also concept of quantity. That, well, the difference between uh, half and a third is one, is, uh, one sixth. Mm. So, and it, this is all uh, arithmetic, operating with, uh, with fractions. Mm -hmm. Very often we see students in high school and they still struggle with, uh, with fractions. fractions yeah. uh, even uh, Miss Ashman mentioned that uh, we've got cases when students are in college and they still struggle with, uh, with fractions. So the first thing that I would uh, test someone who is finishing uh, primary school, how are you with fractions? Yeah. As you were saying, I was thinking back to some time in, in, in my formative years, fractions. So you have the half, so one over two plus mm -hmm. a third, and then how do you add them versus how do you multiply and subtract? And I think oftentimes it comes to the presentation. So in that example, a half plus is a third, how do you add them? Do you go one over two plus one over three, two plus three as the denominators equals five, one plus one is two, two over five? Is that how we do it? Well, <laughs> you're testing me here, <laughs> but this is the yeah. very common error, yes, yeah. which I see in the question papers, even at first year students, uh, yeah. uh, with first year students at the university. Yeah. Uh, we add fractions by finding first the common Com denominator. Okay. That is uh, that's where it starts. Of half and the third, the common, mm -hmm. the common denominator is six. Mm -hmm. So we, you've got three sixths plus two sixths. So it is five sixths. Now with that, right? Um, oh, did I? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three sixths. Half. Uh, Plus yeah. a third, Plus right? Plus a third, yes. Right? Six. And we know the common denominator is six, right? Yes. But how do we know that? Because uh, is it three times two? Are we multiple? Uh, yeah. I'm trying. I use the we use the term common multiple. Yes. You see, there is another concept, Com multiple. Mm -hmm. You see, it is what are the multiples of three? These mm -hmm. are three, six, nine, uh, twelve, etc. Mm -hmm. So when three is multiplied by something else. The product is a multiple of three. Right. So is it, and I, I recognize that as people listening, some of us are verbal learners, some of us are struggling, but this comes back to the foundation, understanding the terminology, understanding how it's layered and built so that we know uh, there are some things you know. You're playing a game of dominoes or cards. You know the game you're playing. There are accepted rules that you play by, and you know uh, this is how it works. So we need to learn that, and that needs to be taught accurately. I think as Ms. Hashman shared. I wonder again to what extent sometimes our instruction isn't accurate or isn't clear. And then the student goes away. Um, think of a person who rides a motorcycle, has learned to ride it, but not properly. And so the enjoyment for the rider as well as the passenger isn't really as safe or as, you know, as nice. You know, if you learn how to lean with the, the rider as opposed in the opposite direction, so is that part of the challenge as well? Yes, this is, I must admit, this is uh, part of the uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm relatively new on the island. I mm -hmm. come from South Africa, so I don't want to, uh, cannot speak no, 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 uh, inform no. in an informed way about the schools uh, on, uh, on Cayman. Uh, but very often for it happens that teachers who are chasing success for their students, mm -hmm. they'll teach the students recipes of how to solve particular types of uh, mm -hmm. uh, problems, recipes that they have to memorize, and then they do it, they get the mark. And sometimes you even hear the students talking to each other. Uh, one asking, but why is it like that in the other side? Well, you don't have to think. You do it. That is how you do it. You get the mark. And this is not mathematics at all. No. Oh. I emphasized earlier is everything is about understanding. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. you, if you understand it, you don't have to memorize it. And to emphasize that you do not need to rely on memory, we even give a very quite substantial booklet when it comes to A and uh, A levels and uh, IB uh, uh, examination. But do you understand what uh, what uh, what you actually uh, mm -hmm. doing? This is the this is the main issue. And unfortunately, if this is uh, not done uh, at school, uh, and uh, teachers have not had this approach of uh, teaching or asking for or striving for thinking and understanding, but yeah. instead teaching recipes, that is how you do it. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, as I listen to you, and today is a fitting day as we talk about Pi Day, the, the notion that this is an issue in many of the developed countries. Uh, we have now uh, adopted a terminology on whether it's STEM or STEAM to see the importance of mathematics in education uh, for all the jobs, not just the sciences, but in everything we do. Uh, we can have the calculator, we can have the spreadsheet, we can have the formulas, but what are we doing with them? How do we use them to analyze and access the information that we have to make the necessary decisions? I'm hoping that people would see math uh, as I see economics, that it's everyday life. Uh, it's it's in everything we do. Um, we have a tank of gas. We know how much it costs to fill it up based on how many gallons the tank can hold and what's the price. But what about how long that tank of gas would last in terms of our driving? Those are simple concepts that we can apply and we know every two weeks we have to refill our tank. Or maybe it's in every two days because of our driving habits. Uh, are we able to then, well, I need a budget to make sure I need $100 extra because this is coming up. We can do it on paper, or we can do it in our in our minds, as my mother said, right? So math isn't this big, scary thing that we should be afraid of, right? No. Ah. No, math is not a scary thing. Yeah. Math is about uh, thinking and understanding. And once you mm -hmm. have experienced the pleasure of thinking about something, yeah. of deriving something by yourself, something that it didn't exist before, whether it is solving an equation or figuring out yeah. uh, the solution to some uh, problem, or figuring out a new question that can be that can be asked. Uh, this pleasure that one experiences is similar to the pleasure that we experience with the gym, with all the endorphins that have mm -hmm. been uh, released. But now this is happening in the brain, and you can observe it with students who have experienced the pleasure of thinking. They don't need any further motivation. They would like more of that. Yeah, that's it. And as educators, I think this should be our our goal. Well, I appreciate you taking time out of your day, sir. I, I'm glad that we can, uh, once again, in this country, realize the resource that we have for those who have come and live amongst us, uh, apply your skill sets. I mean, uh, as, a, as a professor of such a high caliber, published we have that resource right here. Maybe more of us as parents, as educators, will start to appreciate that if we have this discussion, we get people more comfortable and familiar with, with looking at mathematical sort of equations. That it doesn't have to scare us. You know, It's not just about whether we're going to be able to retire at 50 with $50 million in the bank or whether we have to be working forever because we never saved a penny and inflation is <laughs> eating away our, our little income stream. But, but thank you. Any final perhaps thoughts you may want to leave with parents in particular, but students of mathematics? Well, mathematics is not to be feared. Mm -hmm. Mathematics is to be understood. Understanding is key. Thank you very much, Professor. I really appreciate you. And I uh, hope that 100% yes. math for people maybe get a chance to understand it's never too late. And we should never shy away from a little bit of you know, challenge, because it makes us stronger. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me here today on Pi Day. On Pi Day. All right. Well, Miss Susan, thank you. And tomorrow morning, Miss Dorothy is on the record. So come and join him, you know. Start the day off uh, being informed and engaged, and then come back for talk today right after the midday news. Until then, be blessed. 
Talk Today is brought to you by Subway. Open 24 hours in Countryside, Anderson Square in Georgetown, and Centennial Towers in West Bay. And by the Ministry of District Administration, Tourism, and Transport. Explore your history. Explore your land. Explore your sister islands. MedLab in Smith Road Plaza, your complete medical laboratory solution. Call 949-7331. And Savannah Pharmacy in Countryside Shopping Village. Convenient opening hours, including Sundays and holidays. 